We have none other than the one and only, the Kickstarter superhero of the Genome Compiler. Thank you. <laughs> Hello. It's great to be here. Thank you, Sharon, for the warm introduction. So the name of the company is Genome Compiler, and I come here to talk to you about biology. Biology is amazing. Biology is truly amazing. Biology is the most advanced technology on Earth. The best thing about living things is that they can scale. They can scale to meet the magnitude of our challenges. And we face some huge challenges. This is something that you know, motivates me, the realization that we live in a civilization that is totally dependent on finite resources of oil, coal, and natural gas. We use them to produce everything energy, chemical, pesticides, pharmaceuticals, even food. 10 calories of fossil fuel for every one calorie of food that we eat. It's unsustainable, it's dangerous, it's dangerous dependency. What will our kids have when we run out of uh, all of those things? We should look at biology. Living things have been around for billions of years, at least four billion years. This is because they can use renewable resources, such as sugar, sunlight, and CO2. And they are versatile enough and can produce everything we currently get from fossil fuels. So how do we plan a genome compiler to solve this problem? Well, you all know computers, right? Computers understand binary codes, ones and zero. But nobody writes software by typing zero and one, one, zero anymore. They use abstraction layer. They use tool to design, debug, and compile the code into software that runs on computers. Living things are very similar. The code is not ones and zero. It's A, T, G, and, uh, and C. It's a code of DNA. The software is chromosomes, genomes. Each of us, every living thing, is just an app. It's an app running on this kind of computers. It's not hardware. It's wetware. You know, cells are nothing more than computers running the programs of DNA. But what we don't have in biology is the same use of abstraction layers, the same tools to design, debug, and compile the biological code into new living things to solve many of our grand challenges. So we call it a genome compiler, and this is what we build. Our vision is to democratize creation in the biblical kind of sense, or at least empower the creators. And our vision is that in the future, we'll stop destroying species and start creating new ones to solve many of our huge problems. And we can do it because the price of both reading and writing DNA, the two underlying technologies of uh, this field of synthetic biology, has been going down in price performance faster than Moore's law for the past 10 years. So for example, reading DNA, I guess you all heard about the Human Genome Project. It used to cost $3 billion and almost 15 years to read the first human genome. Today, it's an afternoon and about $1,000. It became so cheap that more and more we're digitizing biology. We're reading the genomes of more and more living things and moving it, moving it into computers. The cool technology is being able to write DNA, to synthesize DNA, because then you can take the programs from different living things, design them, press print, and get the physical DNA. There are about 20 different companies that do uh, DNA synthesis. You can just send them an email attachment of DNA letters and get the physical DNA sent back to you. And it's funny to think how more and more uh, things in life becomes email attachment, books, movies, 3D, 3D objects with 3D printers, and now even uh, living things. And it's not just the prices going down. The capability to write bigger and bigger uh, length of code of DNA is going up. We've, we've been able to write DNA codes from the 80, but it was very small. Our capability increased until in 2004, we've been able to write the first genome. It was viruses. Viruses have a very small genome. For example, the polio virus, only 7,500 letters. The AIDS, HIV virus, only 9,000 letters of gold. Ebola virus, only 18,000 letters of gold. Nature knows how to pack a lot of bad things into small envelopes. But the big breakthrough was the 2010. Craig Venter from the Craig Venter Institute has synthesized a million base pair of code. At a million base pair, it's already a whole operating system. In that case, it was a bacterial cell. So what you see here is the image from the science magazine. You see two colonies, each of them billions of cells, all of them starting from one cell. The parent of that cell was a computer, was an email attachment. Right? And because they wrote the, email from scratch, the DNA from scratch, they even added, they wrote their name into the DNA. They wrote literary quotation. And they even added an email address. So these bacteria, if you sequence them and you know the code, you can actually send email to the researchers. But so 
you know, at 2010, a whole bacteria, a few months later from John Hopkins University, they synthesized 2.3 million base pair of a yeast chromosome. The yeast are eukaryotes, just like us. It was a small chromosome. In the future, we believe we can write any length of DNA, any length of uh, uh, code. And think about the future where we can write human genomes. That will be very interesting. So with the price going down, with the capability going up, the need we discover is for design tools. So you can go today to our website, just genomecompiler.com. This is what you see. You can just load the software. It works on Mac, PCs. You can start designing living things right now. We have many users from academia, from industry. The users that we really like are the do-it-yourself users. I think you, heard, you all heard about the maker movement, people making things themselves. So the maker movement have moved to biology. For example, the guy on the right, Cathal, he's from Ireland. He's the first person on Earth that got permission to do genetic engineering in his kitchen. Excuse me? Press play. Yeah. So, and genetic engineering is no more than complicated cooking. So if you know how to cook, you can do genetic engineering. Can you replay the presentation, please? And they are the emergent of, uh, of do-it-yourself community lab. For example, there is, there is a lab at uh, New York in, called GenSpace. There is a lab in Sunnyvale called BioCurious. I just love the name, BioCurious. And these are very important places, because now you can think about a cool idea. You can use our software to design the DNA, press print, get the physical DNA, and then go to a community lab for $100 a month and transform living things with the software that you designed, that you made, create something new. There are even competitions. iGEM stands for the International Genetic Engineered Machine Competition. It started in MIT in 2005. Now it's all over the world, including last year, the first Israeli group from the Technion. This year, the second Israeli group from Ben Gurion. It's a bunch of great kids, and if you want to support their uh, team, I, uh, please uh, contact me after the talk. So this competition is for high school and undergrads. Uh, during the summer breaks, they use uh, the synthetic biology method to create gems, genetically engineered machines. And let me show you what a bunch of undergrads can do over the summer. This group from Munich did something great. So you all know Munich Oktoberfest beer, right? So they re-engineered yeast, Boer's yeast, so under the regulation of alcohol, so when they start fermenting, to produce not just alcohol, but other things. For example, an uh, anti-cancer drug or the molecule that makes lemon taste like lemons. A protein sweetener and even caffeine. So they brought to the competition the first synthetic biology, a naturally caffeinated beer. This group did something great. They re-engineered uh, gut bacteria, E. coli, to produce different colors, different, uh, different pigments under the regulation of different disease states. And their vision is that instead of going to a hospital, especially uh, to a doctor, especially in the third world, you just eat a probiotic yogurt, and then when you go to the bathroom, it's pretty graphical, right? But, oh, it's green, I know what I have, right? I might have this cancer, and I need to go to the doctor. Now, it sounds funny, but this is a new way of thinking about diagnostic, and they did it. This group did something great. This is a group from Cambridge from 2010. They took the bioluminescence uh, system, so fireflies can make light, there are marine uh, bacteria that can glow. They took that system and moved it to a different bacteria and optimized it so much you can actually read a book in the light of glowing bacteria. Now, all the parts, all the designs in iGEM are in our software. So one of our users took the same system and send us this design. This design, 10,000 letters of code, about $8,000 to synthesize and try, has everything you need to make plant glow. And when we saw that, we were so excited, we say, we have to do it ourselves. So we decided to make it happen. So we started a Kickstarter campaign. So why Kickstarter? We want to educate and inspire the world. It's something that looks like science fiction, right? You saw that at Avatar, right? Can be done today by do-it-yourself kids, crowdsource the design, crowdfund the creation, uh, the synthesis of DNA, and just do it in a community lab. So let me show you how we did that. What if we use trees to light our streets instead of electric street lamps? Imagination and innovation are the forces that have advanced our civilization throughout history. 
power generation frontier is synthetic biology. Our guide, nature itself. And as usual, the potential is limited only by our greatest imagination. So why do we need this when we can use this? Inspired by fireflies and aquatic bioluminescence, our team at Stanford trained PhDs, Carl Taylor and Omni Drury, are using off-the-shelf methods to create real glowing plants that are doing yourself bio lab in California. So first, basically, we find um, cool genes from uh, the environment, in this case, the glowing genes from uh, bacteria or fireflies. Uh, then we uh, use uh, software like Genome Compiler to rejigger the genes so that the plant itself can read what those genes are. We then go online, have the genes made, uh, and then they ship to us by FedEx or something like that. Uh, then we take those genes, put them in the agar bacteria, and then use the agar bacteria to turn from the plant. So we can either grow up those plants and get uh, going back. I'm meant to be there now. <laughs> We've designed the DNA sequences, and now we need your help to synthesize the DNA and transform it into a real glowing plant. Back the project today and be one of the first to get a glowing plant. What you'll be getting is more than just a glowing plant. The glowing plant is a symbol of the future, a symbol of sustainability, a symbol to inspire others to create new living things. Help us light the way. Share this video with a friend. Together we can achieve amazing things. Show that you care by backing the Glowing Plant Project today and demonstrating your commitment to a more sustainable future. Thank you. So we got some press about this project and it's good to see that people are interested. So the New York Times, the Wall Street Journal, it was, it was great hype. So how are we, are we doing? I took this screenshot yesterday, so we asked for $65,000. We still have seven days to go, and we got $410,000 as of today. The most exciting thing is not the money. The most exciting thing is this. More than 7,000 people backed this project. More than 600 comments. People are excited. People want to know more. People you know, are really inspired about this uh, new field. And again, there are, most, there are seven days more to go, so I encourage you to tweet about it, go to glowingplant.com, go to the Kickstarter page, you know, get your own glowing plant. In the end, we live in this beautiful living world. The air we breathe was made by living things. You can see it from space even. Environmentalists like to say that we're destroying the planet. I like what George Carlin said. He said the planet is fine. The planet has been around for billions of years. The planet is fine. The people, you and I, we're screwed. Because if we continue to use the old technologies, this burning away the oil and coal and natural gas to produce everything around us, we have no future. We need this kind of technology to have the possibility of not just a future of abundance, but sustainable abundance in a more exciting living world. And if high school, if high school kids can do it in a competition during the summer, all of you can do it. Thank you very much. Yeah.